When you think of Saudi Arabia, you probably imagine miles of desert with no vegetation to speak of. And for a long time, that was true. But after Saudi Arabia discovered their seemingly limitless oil reserves, they've spent years turning things around. Today, you'll be baffled to see the amount of greenery in the previously barren land. Welcome to our channel, Nature Unraveled. With an area of 2.16 kilometers squared, Saudi Arabia has a population of around 36 million, and 95% of its area is a bone-dry desert that should be incapable of bearing any fruit. In fact, a large part of its land is covered by the Rub al Khali Desert. With less than 150 millimeters of annual rain recorded in the country's history and just 14% of its fertile land, Saudi Arabia isn't a country anyone expected to experience green land. But one stroke of luck changed things forever, and it came in the form of oil. You can easily imagine Saudi Arabia's dire straits before they were able to raise capital using oil. People used small coastal strips for farming locally, and most of its food had to be imported, putting an incredible burden on the economy. But the country's big break came in March of 1934, when baffling amounts of crude oil were found. The discovered oil dam ran as deep as 1,440 meters and totaled an estimated 75 million barrels of oil, 17% of the entire world's reserves. And with this, there came large amounts of capital. Wait until you find out how the government started channeling this money into turning its deserts into lush green oases. No matter what, Saudi Arabia needed a water source deep in the desert, and that came in the form of underground reservoirs. Around 10,000 years ago, the Arabian Peninsula had ample rain that allowed human settlements to flourish. But the following millennia saw several droughts that turned it into today's desert area. But that rain accumulated underground in what is known as aquifers, which became a saving grace for the Saudi Arabian government. Large-scale projects in the 1970s saw tube wells drilled in the ground with the reservoirs being enough to kickstart the country's agricultural industry. But experts soon noticed that these aquifers would run dry in the next 50 years, so the government needed to figure out ways to conserve water and fast. And this is what led to the development of center pivot irrigation. You might not have heard this exact term before, but the image it conjures will be familiar. You've probably seen pictures of large green circles in the middle of the desert resulting from this method. Since Saudi Arabia has no permanent river, they needed to make the aquifers last. They did this by attaching sprinklers to the tube wells, which sprayed water in a circular motion to areas ranging from several hundred meters to three kilometers in diameter. While this is no permanent solution, it helps sustain Saudi Arabia's water reservoirs for much longer. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn more about interesting water conservation methods. Also, hit that notification button to get an update every time we post. But just providing water wasn't enough to turn the entire desert into farmlands. The government recognized the importance of mobilizing locals to make them start farming businesses. And they did that by providing benefits and incentives to give them a running start in the industry. Farmers had access to cheap fuel, power, and water. They were provided interest-free loans through the Saudi Arabian Agricultural Bank, as well as technical support, which attracted several newcomers. The import of machinery and raw materials was also duty-free, which was an added incentive. They then turned to the other party in the system, investors. Foreign investors were exempted from taxes for over a decade, with changes to the policy in 2000 introducing additional benefits. The cusp came in 2007 when poor water conservation made new initiatives necessary. Since capital wasn't an issue, the government mobilized technological resources to introduce sustainable techniques into the agricultural sector. This included plans for synthetic feed for the large livestock farming sector, greenhouse use and drip irrigation for farming. The latter is a method where water slowly drips to the roots of plants, allowing water conservation. The government also uses satellite imagery to determine the relationship between crop growth and water consumption. This allows farmers to discern which area would yield the most with the least water. But it wasn't just the focus on water resources that allowed Saudi Arabia to transform into a lush green oasis. In this aspect, the government was smart and realized the need to diversify and advance constantly to keep up with the world. There were three major steps introduced to maintain the industry. Transport is necessary, so roads and highways connecting major cities and ports were constructed. 
Next, numerous high capital projects were started to diversify the economy and increase the sector's size. And finally, several research projects were started with universities to develop seeds that provided higher yields and better quality to keep up with population and export demands. All these measures transformed the country from a food importer to an exporter, something unheard of for a desert country. This was the biggest feat of the Saudi Arabian government accomplished. Turning a desert country self-sufficient isn't as simple as it seems, even with the vast amount of capital they had access to. The government recognized the need to invest in different industries and funneled large amounts of money into livestock farming and establishing fisheries. One of the government's first projects was to focus on wheat production and giant grain silos were built in 1978, which became independent by 1984. Its production exploded so much that it had to be curbed to lessen the burden on water resources. It wasn't the only crop that gained traction and the government did its best to make good use of its resources. And as Saudi Arabia evolved, it became a major exporter of various agricultural produce, starting with an item that's seen as an oasis staple. Saudi Arabia's climate is ideal for palm trees, and over 33 million trees grow here, which is 27% of the world's percentage grows in the country. This includes 300 varieties of dates produced across 13 districts and 123,000 holdings. The largest producers are Al Qasim Province, Al Hasa, and Medina. This totals a production of around 1.54 million tons every year, many of which are exported and donated to food aid programs. Its donations to the UN made the country the second largest food aid provider worldwide. Dates are not the only prominent production, and coffee is often put in tandem with dates. It's an important part of the country's culture, and while it's 50th in the world in production, it's known to be of high quality. While there are plantations in Al-Baha, most of the country's coffee farms are in the Jazan region, Hejazi, and Asir. The area's humid climate and seasonal rainfall make it a prime location for coffee production. But there's another crop grown in the Jazan region, mangoes. The region was given a geographical indication, a sign that tells us the origin of a particular product. A 2022 report by the Saudi press agency stated that 1 million mango trees spread over 19,100 farms produced over 65,000 tons of fruit. The country also produces high-quality olives, with the Al-Juf province in the north home to millions of olive trees. The Al-Juf olive farm is the largest in the world, in fact, producing 10,000 tons of olive oil annually. It produced around 30,000 tons of olive oil in 2020, ranking it seventh among oil producers. Saudi Arabia invested heavily in the livestock industry, with the country having some of the largest and most advanced dairy farms in the Middle East. The nation also has an impressive average of 1,800 gallons of milk per cow annually and exports eggs, poultry, and fish to countries around the globe. In particular, the government has paid special attention to aquaculture by encouraging fishery investments. While many are located near the Arabian Sea, the government is trying to introduce modern methods. Marine pens and tanks on land along the Red Sea coast are being used to raise fish. Another unexpectedly popular export is shrimp, with the black tiger shrimp being exported to the USA and Japan in large quantities. Finally, Saudi Arabia also took steps to play its role in fighting climate change, especially since its effects heavily impact it. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman headed the Saudi Green Initiative in 2021, which saw SR 700 billion fed into the project to create a green economy. The initiative aims to plant 450 million trees and restore 8 million hectares of destroyed land by 2030. There's also a tension on the country's mangrove population, with 4 million trees already planted to restore the shoreline forests. The project will help the country transform to use clean energy, lower carbon emissions, safeguard marine life, and combat pollution and soil erosion. In summary, the government has all hands on deck to ensure the country does its part in the fight against combating climate change while maintaining lush oases in the middle of the desert. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts and your feedback. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more valuable content just like this. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never ever miss a video. Thank you for watching.